Now back to our girders. As you can see, this one is in a spot that's not doing any good at all because there's nothing here. The only thing that's in this area is flooring. Now if you just uh, move your attention over to this wall and look underneath, there's no support underneath this wall at all. So needless to say, over a period of time, this wall is going to start giving way because these 2 by 8s cantilevered over like this will carry only so much weight before they start giving away. And once they start dropping, well then one's going to go, then the next one, and then the next one, and the next thing you know, you have a domino effect. So really, this girder right here should be moved over to be underneath this wall. Even, this is, even if this is the wrong size, having some kind of support under the wall is better than no support at all. And the point I'm making is, this is not doing anything any good. And it goes with the other one that I'm fixing to talk to you about. Okay, now, as we were just talking about this supporting wall, now we're getting back to this girder here, which is really... Even where it's sitting with the other one that's over here is really in the wrong place. This girder here should be in the middle of the room. And you really only need, on a small room like this, just one girder in the center of the room. And all it does is just supports the bounciness of the floor. Because if you span this distance with no support at all, then you'll have some of that bounciness. But all this does, it just takes the bounce out of the floor. Which means that this one is the one that would be underneath that wall over there. So in the real life, we have a support under this wall. We have one in the center. And then of course the perimeter beam that runs around the outside of the house. Now, as we were talking about the other room, about the situation to where one girder should be in the center of the room, and then one girder should be under a bearing wall, well, this is the situation that you should have. As you can see, we have the wall, which is the bearing wall, and underneath, you can see we have the main girder. This is one it's supporting, and this is really the center of the house, which this one is going all the way down from the front of the house all the way to the back of the house. So, and now we come to the center of the room to where we have this one girder here in the center which is the one that is supporting the bounce of your floor. If and when you get ready to have someone or yourself get underneath the house, it's sometimes a good idea to hire an electrician just to come in to find out about these loose wires that are laying on the ground. Because at some point in the past, they have gotten wet if you're getting water under the house. And there's a possibility that the ground could still be a little wet you don't want any of the wires to actually be bare touching that metal box and transferring some current to the ground as you're crawling underneath this house. So it would be a wise idea to have someone come in and take all these wires and put them up against the floor joists to at least get them off the ground. That might save someone's life, especially it might be your own. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take you up into the attic and we're going to show you the purpose of bearing walls. Some people don't understand what a bearing wall purpose is. They hear bearing walls all the time, but let me show you. Okay, up to the attic we go.
Okay, now we're, this, we're talking about loads. And foundation not only takes care of your walls and floors downstairs, but we also takes care of your loads in the attic. These are just as important as the ones down below. If you, if you start losing your foundation, not only are you losing the walls as far as sinking, but you're also getting your roof line to start getting sways. These brick flues that you see in the attic, you think are part of the house, but they're actually not. These flues, what they do is they take the fumes from your water heater, your gas water heater, and sends them up out of the air inside the house. So really, these things are built from the ground, which is down there where we're talking about the foundation pads and piers, and they come all the way up, as you can see, through the through the uh, ceiling, and all the way up through the roof. They're sitting on a pad of its own. So as the house is moving up or down, this flue is not moving. It's staying in one place. Sometimes when you get roof leaks in a house, they sometimes creep in around the flues up on the roof because of the way the house is shifting around, which in turn, as we were talking about the jack studs up here, which the roof line is constantly going up and down as the foundation is moving, which can sometimes work the flashing loose, uh, flashing loose 